scaling your real estate business from $100,000 to $3 million. So what work needs to get done in a real estate company? You got acquisitions, you got operations, and you got dispo. So operations is, should probably be here and here because this graphic works for a real estate company and it also works for a wholesaling company. So let's do this actually. Let's kind of brainstorm this together. We have a second layer of ops here. Um, and why is that? And this, this layer of ops actually corresponds with Dispo at this level. You kind of bypass this one if you're flipping. But let's start here. So acquisitions, you have your lead gen strategies, right? And what do we have for lead gen? Okay, we have PPC, cold calling, we have texting, referrals, mail, bandit. So we have all these different lead gen strategies, right? Which ones are the best? Well, I mean, that depends. If you don't have any money, uh, we have door knocking. That's not a dig on people that don't have money, by the way. So at this level, right, we're not particularly interested in figuring out which one of these are scalable. Uh, door knocking, for example, probably not very scalable because you got to go out there and knock on the doors, right? Bandit signs, yeah, kind of scalable because you can outsource some of that. Uh, mail, absolutely scalable, right? There's no, there's no question about that. Referrals, we still get probably, I don't know, 15, 20% of our business on referrals. Uh, texting, cold calling, and PPC, very scalable. And since we're talking about this progression here, 100 to 3, we're going to talk about the scalable things. We're not going to talk so much about the non-scalable things because the non-scalable things, once you get above a certain level, are fun when you get them. The referrals, amazing. I love referral deals, but hard to scale. N not impossible to scale, but tough to scale. Door knocking, I, I have no idea. I don't, I don't do door knocking. Uh, I don't think it's very scalable. Maybe I could have an army of door knockers out there. But these avenues, definitely scalable. These avenues, marginally scalable. So now, how do we scale them? Well, if we're generating a high volume of cold call leads, these leads go to a lead manager. So a VA is calling 10,000 leads a month. Out of that, we're getting three to four a day. So in a month, we have an average month, we're getting 100 leads per month. Now, how many of those are gonna turn into a deal? Probably like two or three, if you're doing it well. But the problem is, this takes follow-up, right? If we're dealing with 100 leads a month, now again, if we're a single person and we're scaling from here to maybe like here, then we can probably manage 100 leads a month with our CRM and we can probably manage the follow-up sequence and we can probably even remember most of the conversations that we have, especially if we put some notes in like Podio or whatever on the CRM that you're using. But you don't have a company, you still have a hustle. So now if we want to do this, we need times three all the way down. Now we're dealing with 30,000 leads a month with 12 leads a day with three or 400 leads a month. Now we need someone to manage all these leads because this process requires a lot of follow-up and a lot of just touching base, right? So a lead is gonna come in cold, warm, warmer, hot, and freaking, if you're not out there in 45 minutes, you're gonna lose the deal. Now the cold lead, maybe it won't get all the way up to the top deal, but it might turn into a warm lead or a listing eventually. The warm lead might turn into a warmer lead. It depends a little bit on the lead flow, right? If you're dealing with pre-foreclosures, then they have a uh, motivating factor that they may not be internally motivated, but they have other things that they're up against. If you're dealing with a probate lead, they maybe have a different motivating factor. Maybe their motivation is money, but they're not so time motivated because there's not another stressor in the situation. Now you have a probate pre-foreclosure, and you got some other issues, that's probably pretty high. So all these leads are gonna have different hierarchies, which is why when we're doing outbound marketing, when we're prospecting for deals, uh, it requires a lot more follow-up. So at some point, probably at the three to four VA level, more or less, you'd need a lead manager. Now, who's gonna, man who's gonna deal with the leads? Well, from lead manager, you go to acquisitions, and if you have act one, two, three, you do that. So where people get into trouble in this business when they try to scale, is I think, well, I need, I need more acquisitions guys. I need guys to like do stuff and like make calls and all, and you do, you do need acquisitions guys. But our team right now is pretty lean because we don't want to deal with 10 of these guys. It's just not in my personal skill set. I don't enjoy it that much versus some higher level guys that can maybe do a couple different tasks because fundamentally we're not like a high volume wholesale company. We're more of a flipping company. So that's how we've built it and how we enjoy doing it because we like the profit margins associated. But either way, 
Let's have acquisitions guy one, two, three. We'll do the math. You probably need three VAs almost per acquisitions guy. And now you're dealing with some massive data. So now instead of 30,000 leads, right? Let's, let's scale it down. Let's say 20. You're dealing with 60,000 prospects a month from your prospecting list. Prospects versus leads, by the way. And then it kind of breaks down into 10. So what we say, we got uh, well, however many leads that is. It's a lot of damn leads. So that's why this guy becomes really important. When you're getting going, this guy and this guy can absolutely be the same as long as they have the skill set for doing it. When you're also getting going, this guy, acquisitions, and this guy can be the same. So when I scaled from here to like not quite that far, what we did was we had me up here and me up here. Oh, and over here and over there. Um, so that's how that, that's how that works.